when you were in the second round of chemo. Right. Your blood pressure was really low. Your oxygen level was really low. Right. They said, you need to come back because he's getting worse. And you're like, oh my God, no. <laughs> Yeah. That was a very tough night, and I don't know how. What do you remember of this? You were so you were right. I, I really mean, I, I remember it pretty clearly. You do? Oh yeah. Obviously, I was not in good shape, but it never really entered my That's head good. for a moment that it would it yeah. would get that much worse. It wasn't until after that that stay in the PICU that I really begin to think about what I was going through. Cancer is a big, heavy, scary word, and having a story that's actually someone's experience breaks that down. It makes it actually understandable. We all thought about how do you get through this and make sure that you're gonna, you're gonna survive, but then what are you gonna take from this? How do you take the tough challenges and make something that is better not just for yourself, but for the world? Today, as I you know, sit here six years after Evan was diagnosed with stage four cancer, I see how that experience has shaped me as a mother, as a, uh, but also as a professional. The power of a personal story is not just in the story itself, but it's in the fact that a story can lead to change. I'm just gonna start with a few things and then open it up for questions. The week of September 12th, every program has been asked to kind of think about what they can do around um, race, truth, and reconciliation. Is, does anyone wanna... I think we're speak? wired to try to make sense of the world and to try to make sense of why we do what we do as humans. One of the hallmarks of what we do is we intertwine deep personal narrative with more complex ideas facts, concepts, thereby creating something that works on an emotional level, on an intellectual level, and hopefully on a much larger societal level. Our reporters uh, were interested in looking at the effectiveness of a particular program that was supposed to be giving homeless people vouchers to help them find apartments. Instead of telling that story, they went out and they found this woman, Shakira. I was calling to find out if you got any two-bedroom apartments with the link. Not yet. Not yet? No, not yet. Not yet. It's May. Her voucher is about to expire, and she doesn't have an apartment. It's part of life too, right? We can't give up. Right? I can't give up at all. I have three wonderful people in my life that's looking up to me. You know, so I have to do my best for them, too. It's not a good sign for her or for Mayor de Blasio. Link is the centerpiece of his strategy to reduce homelessness. After Shakira's story and the series aired, uh, Mayor de Blasio went to the shelter where Shakira had lived and announced that he was going to investigate 85 landlords for discriminatory practices. So that shows that Shakira's story can lead to change. When people hear a personal narrative, they connect it to themselves, and they connect it to the world around them. And that is how change is made. She loses sleep, and she prays. And then, in early February, on a rainy Wednesday afternoon, when the kids come back to the shelter from school. I missed you all day long, and I been approved for the apartment. <laughs> what? You got the apartment? Shakira finally did find an apartment. <laughs> We are all storytellers by nature, and we have to do that to understand every bit of our lives. Each of us has our own personal narrative about what we're trying to do, what kind of difference we're trying to make. We're all in our own quest, and we're in a larger, I think, community quest to figure out meaning.